Hi everyone, so as uh, you may have seen in my videos, I'm a bit of a fan of the little micro minim OSD running the MWOSD uh, firmware. Um, I put it on my sort of NASA type flight controller quads and I can change PIDs and it shows me some information and that's really great. But um, one of the questions people sometimes ask is what is a good affordable OSD if for general use? I'm thinking more towards the plain end or you know perhaps other sorts of quads. So for your non sort of 250 flight controller type quad where you have the, the UART passing information to this, um, I thought I'll make a couple of videos about how to use this as a standalone. In the first one we're going to use it as the most basic uh, thing because this is only like five pounds and it's tiny. So if you just want it to have your voltage, uh, maybe RSSI, uh, your flight time, then I'll show you how to wire this into uh, an existing setup so you can see that information. We'll then go forward from that, probably in part two, depending how long this is. And I'm going to talk about how to add a, a standalone GPS. This is another thing, which costs about five pounds I picked up from Banggood. Um, and we can put these in together. And this can obviously give you a location, where you are, how high you are, how far you're going, how to get back home. So this and this making up a really inexpensive and hopefully quite full featured OSC. Obviously you haven't got any sort of autopilot facilities, this is more about finding out where you are and finding out the sort of information this can give you as a standalone situation just by soldering a few bits up, hopefully. Let's get stuck in. So I've got my micro minim and what I've done, because it comes out of the package uh, just without anything, I've put the side pin headers uh, in the ones with holes, I've also put a uh, pin headers along the uh, video in out uh, and a couple here for where the battery is going to go. Now if you're doing this on a mini quad you might not want any headers on uh, because to keep the weight down and you might not want it on a sort of permanent install but I figured for what I'm doing I want to be able to swap it in and out easily uh, and that's why I've put the pin headers on so I should be able to, the idea is I can take an existing config be able to easily pop this in and take it out if I want to. So the pin headers come with the uh, Minim. All you have to do is solder them on, basically. A soldering iron required. You'll also need an FTDI adapter, a five volt one. Um, I'll put a link in the description about where you can get all these bits anyway. But you may have one, you may not. Obviously a USB cable to go with that. I can't believe um, there's anybody in the world that doesn't have a spare box of USB cables now. I know I do. Uh, and I'm using a couple of um, little mail to mail servo leads in order to help me flash this. I recommend the way to flash so you do this right is on my one ground is over here so I align the ground pin to the ground pin on the first one and I follow the conventions to put the ground pin well the ground cable in the same order which I then go into in the micro minimum. Um, if you use the front side as being the one with the solder pads on it, you won't go wrong. Uh, basically, this pin and this pin are ground. This next one is the voltage in. If you screw that up and put voltage somewhere else, it can very easily blow it. So be careful. What I make sure I do is um, align my first ground pin to ground pin, um, and then I know it's okay. I do the same. So you should end up with that ready for flashing. So USB cable plugged in and let's go. I wanted to make sure this video is easy enough for people who have never done any of this before so apologies if this seems all a bit obvious. If you know what you're doing you can obviously skip ahead. So MWSD, the firmware you get from MWSD.com uh, just go to the downloads page get the latest download which at the moment is 1.6 and go ahead and download it. So because we have to alter and then recompile the firmware, what we need to do that is the Arduino IDE. You can get this from arduino.cc as shown here. So here we have the expanded zip file for MWOSD. And what we have here is just the MWOSD.ino. If you double click this, it should open the Arduino IDE. Here we are in the IDE. And there's just a couple of things to change, and it's just a case of commenting things out and uncommenting. So we're going to comment out 
the type of OSD that was set by default and we're going to uncomment white spy micro which is basically what the micro minimum OSD comes out as. We'll comment out clean flight and we'll uncomment no controller because essentially we've got no flight controller. With that done we'll save it and then we're almost ready to write this to our OSD. What you need to do is also change the board type. We need to change the board type to an Arduino Pro or Pro Mini and then double check your processor is 5 volt 16 megahertz at mega328 as it is here. We can then go ahead and just verify that our sketch can now be recompiled okay and that should work fine. At this point you should have your USB cable plugged into the FTDI as well as the OSD itself being plugged in to that as, as we showed before. And I've just tried to upload and I've realized I haven't set my serial port so this is an extra thing to do. Set your serial port correctly. I'm on a Mac so I've got a kind of weird sounding serial port. If you're on a PC it'd be called COM something which has suddenly appeared. So we select the right port and let's do the upload and that's going to be all good and fine. Let's go ahead and configure the OSD now using its GUI software. Just a quick bit of info for any uh, fellow Mac owners out there, depending on what version of the code you're running. If you go to the GUI and try running the app, if it gives you this information, uh, this is because this is from basically an unidentified developer. Now, normally what we'd be able to do is uh, open up system preferences uh, and go to security general and there should be something here called um, unidentified or open from anywhere. This seems to be missing. I think this is because I'm running Sierra. It used to be there. Uh, if this is the case for you, uh, just use this command. sudo spctl minus minus master disable. If you do that, give it your root password and go back in. What you'll see is you've now got apps uh, allowed from anywhere and then you can go ahead and open that as normal basically authorize it as soon as you've done that you can go back to saying app store and identify developers and if you go back into that you'll notice that anywhere has gone away but meantime if we then just try and start up again because we already authorized it it's okay and it's going to start up alright I don't think Windows has any of those problems. It's probably just a case of saying, yep, I'm agreeing to run that. So here we are, and we're running the GUI, and I'm selecting my port, which again is a weird one on the Mac, possibly a com point on a uh, Windows machine. So let's go ahead and select that. And it's reading the OSD, and this is what the default looks like. Uh, quite busy, uh, got bits and pieces all over the place. Now, the first thing I actually do is I replace the font on this one. This is this is not bad and if you've got a screen for all you'd need it but for me I kind of like the um, the slightly bold one which I find easy to see so if you just open that up um, and then upload that. Okay that's the font uploaded so it's pretty simple this one we're um, not going to do much to it other than take things away so we've got the the main display voltage which we want. Um, we're not going to use the flight controller so keep that off. I'm going to have three cells and I want my voltage on that 10.5. Um, you can put a second voltage in if you want to, but uh, for this sort of basic thing, I'm not going to. Um, RSSI, I'm not going to use this this time. Um, I might come back to how you put that on. Basically, if you've got analog um, RSSI, that would work pretty easily. If you've got something different, um, it's a little more complicated. Uh, so this is really a case of turning a lot off. So we're not going to have the flight mode or any of this gubbins because we just don't have it. So we're going to take all of this away. GPS is no, compass is no, heading is no. The only thing we actually might need is the timer, which is quite useful. Unfortunately, it's not a flight timer in this case because it doesn't know um, when you were armed. So kind of use it for reference, but you'd have to sort of remember when you launched it in order to, to make it useful. Uh, so let's go ahead and 
write that to the OSD. You should see little flashing lights on your FTVI adapter and things. So if you want to, you can always just close that down again, reconnect, let it read the OSD and make sure it comes back and looks how you want it to. Now these things you can move around if you like as well. Using the slightly weird layout editor, you can go ahead and find the bit you want, like the timer for example, and then we can shove that around. So some people like them up and you can try moving them to the absolute corners, just make sure it actually stays on your screen there. Um, and then obviously if you change it, don't forget to write that again. But I'm just going to keep it as default as I've just written there. But feel free to mess around and add other bits you like. But of course all we're, all we're actually getting from this very basic one is our voltage and our timer. So there's really not much more you can do with it here. So let's go ahead and exit that and we'll try plugging it in and see what happens. So just before we actually go and connect that, I thought it would be useful just to show our OSD and what we need to connect. So battery positive minus, pretty obvious, as is the video in and out, showing the ground and video signal. One thing I wanted you just to be aware of, because it's so easy to get wrong and blow it up, is the 5 volt input you need to give it at the top. I blew my very first one up by forgetting that um, it's, although I was using a regular server lead, of course I needed to rewire it. So my suggestion is to follow this. If you look at the picture, on the left here we have a regular servo lead. What I did to connect this to my receiver to power it from is stripped the signal cable out, so that's that end uh, going to receiver, and this end going to the minimum OSD. You'll see we've had to rearrange the ground and power to be put in a different position, as shown on the right there. And so when we plug that in, all I need to remember to do is leave that um, one gap at the right hand side and my polarity will always be correct. So that's my suggestion about how to wire to get your 5 volt input. Okay, so here's my super pristine uh, AXN. Try not to be too intimidated by quite how clean it is. Obviously it needs an awful lot of uh, getting into the dirt to get that. Now this has just got a very basic uh, FEV setup on it. Put an old Emotion RC600 connected here to a Firefly Q6. So I'm just going to pair this on just to make sure we get a picture first of all. Mm. Yeah, picture there with my hands. bits and pieces there. So we've obviously got uh, a picture there, it's working, so let's see if we can plug the other stuff in. Okay, so we've got our OSD ready to go in. So I'm going to connect the power to a spare channel in my receiver, just to power 5 volts. video out. This is going to go here to video out from the camera, goes to video in and here. We've got um, a lead I made up. Well, off made up out of bits of old servo wire because I've run out. Uh, this is going to go to this immersion. Obviously you might need to make up your own slightly different wire. And that should be about it. I'm just going to have it floating around there for now. Oh hang on, I've got the battery. Uh, battery wise, when I made up my ESC, you see the XT60 here. I had a couple of these JSTs um, 
I got coming out of it as well. One of which powers the VTX. The other one I can plug um, directly into here. Okay, so we're plugged in. We've got the battery going in off one of these JSTs. We've got 5 volt going in here. We've got the video in and then the video out coming in. So let's power it up, see what happens. Well, we've got a picture and we've got uh, a voltage on the OSD. But I'm not completely convinced that voltage is right. Let's just double check that. So we're saying 10.4 in the OSD. And we're getting a reading of... Uh, 11.3, which is what I'd expect. So, what to do if your voltage isn't quite right? Okay, so let's get back into the OSD. And I did notice here, one of the things we've got is this uh, voltage adjust. Normally, because I'm using it on mini quads, I'd be using the flight controller main voltage as um, my reference point. And I noticed this had a 200 by default, so let's try moving that back to zero and see what happens, shall we? Like that back, plug it in again, see what happens. So when I set that voltage adjust to zero and went back and plugged it in, I had a voltage reading of exactly 0.0, .0 volts. This seemed a bit odd, so clearly it was perhaps some sort of multiplication factor rather than just an offset of the voltage. So I went the other way and set it to 255, which was the maximum, and then got 13.3 volts. So it's a kind of trial and error thing. I don't know exactly what the calculation is, but you're better going in little adjustments. What I found here is that when I adjusted at 215 after trying a few things, uh, this was accurate. And I tested this on three batteries um, and they're all coming out as being accurate uh, compared to the multimeter. So I think I've got the right thing there. Obviously this may be different for you. So double check what's on the OSD, compare it to a multimeter and just make sure that comes together correctly. Okay, so having adjusted the voltage correction, let's see what we've got here. Let's take this voltage again. And that's coming at 11.2 exactly. So let's plug that in. Uh, 11.2. Looks better. Okay, just check in, we're okay when we zip things around. That's all good. Excellent. Now obviously at this point, what I'll be doing is taking this and tacking it away somewhere and, you know, putting some stuff on it, some either some tape or some shrink wrap or some liquid tape or something. Just because this has got the potential to shoot all over it and there's not much room in here. But because I'm going to move on and now fit the GPS to it, I'm not going to do that right now. So when we come back and do the GPS fitting, we'll make a better space for it uh, and tuck it all away nicely and get some better cabling. But certainly functional, absolutely works fine. It's just a case of you kind of need to stick that away somewhere and then put the top on and you're all the way. Congratulations, we're at the end of the video. If you made it all the way through to here, well done. You must have really wanted to get that OSD going. <sighs> if it's any consolation, it took me even longer to put this video together than it did for you to watch it. Come back next time, we'll be talking about how to attach a GPS like this to the OSD, making it much more fully functional. We'll put it away in the plane properly, and if possible, fingers crossed we're committing, We'll get that plane in the air and see how it actually performs. Until then, I'll catch you next time. Bye.